So, texture workshop during lockdown, okay? And I'm going out doing shopping or whatever. This is the car park in my building. So, stuff like this, look, these great textures. Um, so, things like that, the ceiling, all of this. I photographed a lot of this kind of stuff and I'm going to put it through Lightroom and then I'm going to put it, um, show you how I'd use it and also put it through ZBrush and make alphas. So, let's go with that. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is first off, I'm going to run my texture photos that I've collected from various um, areas around, uh, around my building basically. They're going to run through Lightroom and the main reason I need to put these through Lightroom is not just editing. They're off an iPhone. Um, my photos are coming off of an iPhone, uh, a brand new an XR, okay? And the XR file system is HEIC, dot HEIC. Problem here is this file system doesn't necessarily open in other programs. Now it'll open in my latest Photoshop for me. It won't open in older formats so i can't open these in indesign they won't open in illustrator because i'm running 2019 but they will open in the latest photoshop if you're not running 2018 it'll run in that so i need to convert them so how i do that is i take the folder and i drag that to lightroom they come in like this i press import now i always give my photos a very simple tweak i do the same thing to all my photos when i'm tweaking right i don't know if I've done this all the time because I want to bring up the sharpness. I'm going to be using these mostly as textures and save me doing it um, as an edit to individual files at a later date. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I do is I go into develop up here. I press auto and audible. Okay. The newer Lightroom, as far as I know, I haven't used it yet, I haven't updated, will actually automatically adjust across the board. Here. Okay, so my little trick, my favorite button for sharpness in Lightroom or Camera is clarity. Because watch what happens when I bring that. It kind of just brings up a major adjustment in the contours and the, the kind of sharpness of the image and the definition. Okay, and the shadows up a little bit, highlights down, saturation slightly. Transform to an image, you can see it a bit better. Make sure I press Command or Control A so all my images are selected and auto sync is on. So, whatever I do to one image, that's all of them. And the last thing I do um, is I go down to post crop vignetting and I just come down a bit and that just vignettes the edges slightly. So, I have a highlight in it and that helps a lot when you're doing. Um, textures. Now I don't want to do it too much, you can see it's very extreme here, it needs to be subtle. Okay, so now my images are done and ready. So I go to File, Export, I've been set as JPEG at maximum quality, and they're going to go into a subfolder called JPEG. Okay, I'll let that pause there for a second just so that my exports need to see it's done now. So now if I go back to my find window, best textures, these are all my HGIC files, and there you go, JPEGs. And these JPEGs are all that bit more saturated and strong. So I have everything from rusted edging, and I use uh, different shades of uh, textured concrete for a lot of my work. These are um, actually old palettes where I would mix in acrylics and I really like the thickness of the texture of these little broken pieces that look like they could be palette like maps. I also have, as I talked to some people before about, these are manholes, Irish manhole covers from my city. Now I'm not just going to put these through uh, Photoshop, I'm also going to show you how to make alphas in ZBrush with these, okay? And I took a photo here, that's a sample, there's a burnt um, porridge stuck on the bottom of the pot. I was very tempted to use my macro lens, but I said no, I'll just use my XR for everything. And there you go. And here's a photo I took of a bird carcass today. So, a lot of fun. Like, that's pure, that's very good texture now for doing something in, 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 on a metal album cover. Um, okay, so there are my textures. They're ready. I'm going to show you how I would use these on a 2D image in my work. Okay, so what I have ready is this goblin head that I made in 3D, and I will get to the 3D version 
later. Okay, so I have it just on two layers right now. Um, if you're not very familiar with uh, Photoshop, I'm going to do this without using layer mask. I'm literally going to drop textures in, overlay them, and see how I get up. Okay? So, for instance, a texture like this that is very simple and doesn't have a lot going on, dropped in as a smart layer. As you can see, it's a smart layer because of this symbol, which means I cannot directly edit it, I cannot rub it out unless I rasterize it, which happens when I press OK. Or, by right-clicking on the layer, on this area, and press rasterize layer. And I'll put it behind it. So now the texture in the background. If I, what I like to do to my texture to make it more subtle is I bring in a new layer in Photoshop. I set it to a one uh, a medium gray, which is usually around one two eight RGB across the board. Okay, it doesn't have, as long as it's centered there, it doesn't really matter to me um, what the numbers are. And again, I want to do a vignette, but I'll do it by going to the gradient tool, setting it to the second option, which was foreground color only. Dragging in on every side so I get that kind of vignette. Soft light at the base. Filter, blur, all the blur just to soften it. Okay, and then with the opacity, I can bring it up and down. Okay, now if I turn my texture on over that, I'm going to press transform in Photoshop. Let me just do that. Okay, and I'm going to go soft light. Now my texture is a little bit more in the background. Okay. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put a texture on him. So this bubbly texture here might be pretty cool on my, my goblin. So bring up the top and I press soft light. And I'm going to move it around until I see where I like it. This. Oh, that look kind of, and I like the curve fits the shoulder pretty well. Okay, rasterize layer again. Now, if you're a person who doesn't use layer masks, this is what's great. When you have a white background, anything outside the background becomes transparent, and you could simply go ahead with a brush and just rub it out like this. Look, I'm using a texture brush just to get off the edge of it. So that was grease after making a fry in a frying pan. Okay, we could duplicate it. I could use a transform tool again, and because of the curve, maybe I could go with eyebrow. Like that. See? Now turn them off for a second, turn back on the backgrounds. Here's the thing. If I want to do non-destructive editing and use layer masks, which is a very vital part of Photoshop. First off, I'm going to give a bit of a highlight on my palette here first, so I'm going to go to make my palette white, gradient tool again, or change it to a circular gradient, and then I'll just do this little faded circle. I'll put it behind his head. So the highlights is the light spotlight and then set the soft Soft enough. Okay. So let's say I brought back in this one again, but this time I didn't want to just make it what we call non-destructive editing, so it's left to the smart layer. Smart layer simply still on. I press soft light. Well now I want to get the edging off. If I press command, right? Or I press control on my PC and as I float over the goblin layer I get that little symbol there for our selection. You click, it selects the mark with the march against the edge of my figure. And now I press this button for add layer mask. You see? I turn off the chain, link command, the link button, and I select on the layer, not the layer mask, you'll see this little um, edging tool to know which one you're selecting on. If I select the layer, it moves around Sorry, the link is still off. Link off, it moves around inside. Okay. So what I often do before I do, before I'm gonna take off the mask again, I will put on their mask, soften up my edges with the flat, not the spotlight. Make sure you go back to the flat edge gradient. I do that so I soften up my edges and my gradient. And then I'm going to select that side and go convert to smart objects. So now it's still a smart object, but it has added the layer mask to the layer. And then now I select the character. Boom. Put it in. Right. So there it is now. I'll turn off again the chain so I can move that around inside 
and, and, and I can scale it or whatever I want inside. And I can keep duplicating whatever I want. A great way to duplicate is press Alt and you see this double arrow symbol filled up. And you just drag and you duplicate the, the texture. See? So that's a goblin. Textures, weight, what? Grease. So we put some cracks in his skin. Soft light. Center. But, and you could go through all the different blend modes, which is here. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what blend mode is and you see a written tutorial, there's bugs of crap on you, by the way, with Photoshop. There's no button that says blend mode. It just says normal, and you move it here to, to create the blend mode. So, uh, soft light is probably the strongest one that I use for subtlety. And I can move that around and do the same thing. I can actually copy this layer mode, put it over my guy, move it around. Of course, I didn't do the soft edging on it this time. Again, I made the same mistake of not selecting the layer, I was on the mask. Another round, switching around this thing right there. In this case, I'm just going to go uh, convert to rasterize layer, apply layer mask, and now I'll uh, add another layer. So just get off there. So, very quickly there, I have uh, added two textures to a base 3 model that. Um, I think it's pretty well now. And then I'm just gonna maybe go in here with a white brush, just give me a little highlight for an eye, so it's up to work with, you know? Okay, and I was just using two of the textures I've created just with my iPhone and texture for the background. So it's very concept art looking uh, thing. What we could do as well is let's say we take one of my page textures over the whole thing. That one's a bit Shaky and kind of so grab it over the whole thing. Uh, thing. Again, I'm going to rasterize there by right clicking the option. I'm going to desaturate it, which was image adjustment desaturate. I'm going to press soft light. Let me see if I can just bring in some textured brush strokes. There we go. Another thing you can do is actually completely using the paint bucket on black heavier layer selected click on it and it gets really complete I'm using something like a soft texture brush I like these powder brushes I made with talc ridiculously big though I'll take one of these and once it's on the white over here I can start to bring back sections on it steering that Get that layer, the texture, some of that's in the plug, and then of course, mask it out again. Or a little on the mask. Either way, there's lots of, there's just so many different combinations of Photoshop for the students. Okay, so that's one way of working. Now, I'm going to open ZBrush and show you how we use the same textures but to put the 3D textures onto a 3D model scheme or other than it's what we call 2.5D. Okay? Okay. So this goblin, when this texture is done, I'm going to put it away, okay? So, I'm going to take one of my textures, a nice heavy one. Okay, I know somebody was very interested in this guy, you know, my um, Irish manhole color. So I'm going to bring the Photoshop, okay? If I want to make an alpha for ZBrush, which is basically where I can create a text, this is ZBrush. If I want to put a texture on this guy, it would be a standard brush, drag effect and alphas are these little symbols like this and I can use these buttons to create texture on the model so this is very heavy now so you can see the demonstration of it okay let's drag and that the model okay for creating cracks and skin and scars and stuff and so there he is this is the same guy that I rendered out and used the other part in the 2D stuff in, in Z, uh, sorry, Photoshop here. Okay, I'm just going to divide him in the division here in ZBrush. Is that I smooth out the skin by doubling the amount of polygons. But it also doubles the memory so he will move slightly slower. So if I went up way too high, you either crash out ZBrush or um, move very, very, very bad performance. Okay, so back to Photoshop. Let's say I want to use this one. Desaturated. Okay, I often do this, I can camera off filter. 
I auto it first. Really bring up the contrast. I can make a really sharp and black and white image. You know, make sure it's like almost HDR. And um, just to do a trick where I use my last function, double drop the raw, so I do it twice. You know, it's quite high in the curve up. I have an action for curves, so I go higher. Now, I'm going to adjustments inverts it's a negative. So we now have a negative at that alpha. Okay, now if we want to get the proper fade on it, we use the same big net technique I used before, which is gradient tool, set to foreground color one, new layer, drag in so I fade off all the edges. I've got to make sure it's jet black. Tinge red in there. It's very crude, but it's only just so I can show you the idea. Flatten. You keep this as a Photoshop file, and I'm going to call it Z Alpha Test. Put it in the same folder as the rest of this tutorial. Z Alpha Text, Test, Done. And baseline, it doesn't need to be huge. When you actually get downloadable, um, the the Z alphas that come with Z brush are like in the KBs, they're tiny. Okay, so now that was my manhole cover. So I go back into alphas, I go into the import button and find my own alphas. So we're going to next our textures. There's my alpha test, bring it in. There it is. Okay, and watch what happens now when we drag it out to the skin. It's a bit crude because there's quite a lot of. It's very big. There's just so much information in the photo, and I over sharpen it. Put down the intensity of it, though, much. And I get the triscals coming through in there. We can use the skin texture. So the intensity in ZBrush, and boom, it's huge. Like, it really cuts into the model. Really down a bit. Hmm. 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 Celtic Goblin Warrior going on. Oh, it's good. Made out of mantle. So let's try it if I did it with the same. Photo from before. So let's get the, the fat. Let's get the fat. This one. Back into Photoshop. Let's try it without sharpening. Let's just go to saturate. Invert. Auto contrast, maybe. Just bring it up a little bit more. And then big net up here, just, I'll just leave it on the same there. My way to, to quickly make sure I the Photoshop file is duplicated there because it'll automatically save the Photoshop file. So Z alpha test, swap B, save. Now, let's put that on our guy. So we'll go back into the alpha, import, test B, boom, which will come up sec. And for some reason it doesn't too um, this one oh for some reason it's saving is cheap save as the SD file that's why I didn't read it It needs to be a Photoshop file for three years now. There you go. And there you go. There is the skin. But made with the same greasy photograph. And that works really well because it's almost a like dragon skin. Made the same greasy photo uh, photo of, of grease that was left in the pan. I don't know how many photos I take in my kitchen because I'm really messy when I cook. And uh, I think it's almost a bit compact in my pipeline to leave it. And there you go. But what we can also do is, and that's just using the alpha texture, okay? What if I go back to my standard brush, turn off my alpha, go to this texture, and go to import a photographic texture, press textures, go to my JPEGs again, go tile. And I'll cancel. See them. Same texture. Mm -hmm. 
pictures off the end, so there's still a chance to turn on. But to make sure that I have RGB on, I'm going to turn off the Z silk, which means these are the 3D sculpting buttons. If they're off RGB, is color only. Okay, I'll change my uh, material in ZBrush. I don't even use ZBrush, it's great fun. Just so you can see more clear. Now, just like I did in Photoshop, I can actually drag that texture directly into the scale. This is very messy, but I'm just showing you the possibilities. You could actually turn back on the alpha also. The last alpha I moved forward. If I put on Z add, C so I'm cutting and putting on both that texture there at the same time. Combining both. Okay. Two different programs, similar and similar process. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it works for you. And any other quick ZBrush it might be very different for some Photoshop users, but um, some of the processes if you have fun with it, just there's no need for possibilities. Next up for me is Vector and SVG brushes. But look at how much you can achieve by just taking a photograph with a half decent uh, smartphone.